Hello, it's John Pollock, and this is Fight News Now Extra, and we have tons of news to discuss today with John Ramdean and Robin Black, including a UFC champion going under the knife, a new eight-fight deal for a tough winner, and the UFC introduces their newest weight class. The UFC sent out a press release on Wednesday night officially announcing the addition of the 115-pound women's strawweight division to the organization. They also announced that the 20th domestic season of The Ultimate Fighter will begin filming next May and it will be an all-female season with 11 strawweights already signed by the organization and they include Invicta FC champion Carla Esparza, Claudia Gadella, Tisha Torres, Felice Herrig, Joanne Calderwood, Rose Nama Yunus, Emily Kagan, Beck Hyatt, Juliana Lima, Alex Chambers and Paige Van Zant. The winner of the all-women's season of Tough will become the first strawweight champion. Lightweight Josh Thompson has voiced his opinion of late regarding the knee injury to champion Anthony Pettis. When speaking to BloodyElbow.com, Thompson reiterated that he felt surgery for a PCL injury is pointless and could actually do more harm to Pettis' knee than if he just healed it on his own, citing his own research after dealing with the same injury. Thompson was to fight Pettis this weekend on Fox, but with Pettis out, he will meet Benson Henderson January 25th. Ariel Hawani reported this week that UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez had surgery this past week for a torn labrum in his left shoulder that he suffered during his last fight with Junior Dos Santos back in October. There was hope he wouldn't require surgery after he was first diagnosed, but with the surgery he will miss the majority of 2014. It was in 2010 that he tore the labrum in his other shoulder. And it was announced on UFC Tonight this week that lightweight Diego Sanchez has signed a new eight-fight contract with the UFC, which will likely take him to the end of his career. The 31-year-old won the middleweight contract on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter and has gone 13-6 and six inside of the octagon, including challenging for the lightweight title against BJ Penn back in December of 2009 at UFC 107. And I'm here with John Ramdean and Robin Black, and let's first dive into the announcement of the latest weight class added to the UFC with the strawweight division, which I think also couples with the announcement of the end of the Invicta strawweight division because they just signed the entire division. And basically, really, you look at the horizon, it might be the end of Invicta. I mean, the UFC, you know, Dana White over the years said, oh, we will never have women in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Clearly, the talent pool isn't that deep. And Invicta proved 100% well, of fighter yeah, deep for this yeah, one. What's yeah. crazy is that Invicta proved that there is enough women to compete in a number of different weight classes. And what does the UFC do? They do exactly what they did with Pride and the WEC and Affliction and all these other organizations. Once they see something good, they go after it, they take it, and you feel bad for is Invicta. There, does there have to be some kind of financial agreement here? There's what? no no there way. doesn't have to be. Oh, there is, though. There definitely There's is. no Shannon way Knapp. Shannon Knapp is stomaching no. all of these losses on these shows, handing over all these fighters, under, which are under contracts, which the contracts do not give an out clause for the UFC. Yeah. So an agreement was clearly made oh, here. Oh, for sure. There's no way that they can be getting nothing here. Well, what but, is the upside? Yeah. Like, what, what type of an agreement? Oh, they'll have a financial agreement. Shannon Knapp is extremely intelligent. She's one of the great promoters of any combat sport in the world. She knows exactly what she's doing. They'll develop a whole bunch more. Uh, 115 pound female uh, fighters for Invicta and they'll make a deal where they'll sell these contracts over for enough money to help build their but, company. But the problem is that why would people tune into that product when you know that the best whether it be 115 or 125 female fighters in the world are now fighting in the UFC. Why am I tuning into Invicta? Why, why do we turn, tune into World Series of Fighting or Bellator for that matter? The top 450 fighters in the world, male fighters, are fighting in the UFC, but we do it. There's an audience and it's all saps like us who want to watch more fighting. And those are really your hardcore audience anyway. So you, you develop, you be a bit of a feeder league and you develop the talent. You make money as a feeder league and you build a product the best that you can underneath that that main league that can still attract an audience like people like us and our viewers. Here is an argument. There was a time back when we just simply had champions from 155 up through heavyweight. I think pretty much everyone knew who all the champions were and when there was a title fight you could really see that difference on pay-per-view. Today simply putting a title fight on top, yeah. we're going to see this with a double title fight on February the 1st with two titles on the line it doesn't mean the same as it did five years ago. Are there too many weight classes right to now? To you, it doesn't mean the same, and maybe to us, it doesn't mean the same, but for the casual viewers, it's more important that they tune in to see 
not the ordering UFC. these shows. No, I, I know that, but they're going to tune it. That's why it's the UFC's responsibility to not try to put some of these fights on pay-per-view. You have to do what they did yeah. with the UFC's 125-pound men division, men's division. Just give the viewers these fights for free, yeah. and hopefully it'll build that way. Because, again, when you when you add the title to the Realistic, mix. Like, we've seen Demetrius Johnson now twice on Fox. Yeah. If this were a pay-per-view yeah. fight on Saturday night, do you really think this thing would be doing jack no, that's, I don't, that's why it's on free TV. Yeah, exactly. And, and they have a number of different deals, a number of different platforms now. And now it's all actually making sense to me. The whole thing is being presented like, hey, look, you don't watch every single football game in the world. You watch your favorite team uh, play. You only watch, you know, your home team play. You don't uh, watch every single boxing card in the world, but there's a million belts. And if you're a boxing fan, you're like, oh, a belt is on the line. It's just sort of, it has watered down the product, but it's also made it bigger and it has a larger reach. And it's become kind of like almost every other sport in a way. We purists kind of find that sad, but from a financial and a business standpoint, I think it works. Let's uh, quickly chat. Cain Velasquez, he could miss a significant portion of 2014. Fabricio Verdum, he's saying he's simply going to wait. This guy has fought twice yeah. in the last two years, and he's saying he's just going to wait here. This really does put that division on hold now. Yeah, I think Fabrizio Verdum has the luxury of being the ADCC champion, so he can go around the world teaching jiu-jitsu, still money. making a whole bunch of money, and wait for his opportunity to face off against Cain Velasquez. However, a fight between the winner of uh, Josh Barnett and Travis Brown is especially if it's Josh Barnett versus Fabrizio Verdum. Come on, yeah. make that fight happen. I think Verdum's making a mistake for a couple of reasons. It's just my opinion, but one, you know, people forget about you real quick. If all of a sudden Barnett is the guy everyone's talking about, you're out. You're out. And secondly, uh, being a jiu-jitsu guy traveling the world is a great living, but you've got to get in there and fight. You don't go from not fighting for 18 months to fighting the best heavyweight in history. You just don't do that. That's crazy. Quickly, Diego Sanchez, eight fight deal. How many of it those fights? It should be fights? an 18 fight deal. Diego Sanchez, the man, this guy entertains unlike uh, How most many of, those of the people fights in the is he actually going to have? I'm sure he'll have the fights. Like, <laughs> All eight. Yeah, yeah, who knows? I, I, I think he probably he will. He probably I mean, will. This is, not a guy, money. Yeah, this is not a guy who's going to be talked out by injuries or be talked out by damage to his brain or his noggin. This guy fights. <laughs> All right, well, we will see how many of those eight fights Diego Sanchez realizes. But we have more coming up right now with Fight News Now Extra.